Have you ever played craps on a table where the field pays triple on both the 2 and the 12? Well, I haven't either. This is a wager that carries no house edge for the casino, and that's why it's rarely offered. But I've heard rumors that it has existed for some promotions, and I've always wanted to know what it might feel like to play at such a table. Since I wrote my own crap simulation engine, I can change the table rules however I want. So let's run a simulation and find out what it's really like to play at such a generous casino. This is Dice Data. Now, before we jump into this mythical payout, let's first talk about what the field wager is and analyze the more common payouts that you're likely to find on your next trip to the casino. The field is a self-service bet that's located in the center of the table. To play it, you simply put your chips in the field area in front of you as close to your position as possible. You generally have to bet at least the table minimum, and since it's self-service, it's your responsibility to collect your winnings before the next roll, otherwise the dealers may assume that you're letting the bet ride. There are 11 possible throws of the dice, and the field bet wins on 7 of them. The bet wins if a 2, 3, 4, 9, 10, 11, or 12 is thrown. And the bet loses if the shooter throws a 5, 6, 7, or 8. Now, if you know anything about the distribution of two dice, you might have noticed that the losing numbers are some of the most likely totals to be thrown. In fact, there are 20 ways to lose with those four numbers, and only 16 ways to win with the others. If the casino paid only 1 to 1 on all these numbers, the house edge would be 11.11%, .11%, which wouldn't be the worst bet on the table, but it would be pretty close. Because of that, the bet typically pays at least double on the 2 and 12. This brings the house edge down to 5.56%. Many casinos pay 3 to 1 on either the 2 or the 12, but still pay 2 to 1 on the other. That brings the house edge down to 2.78%. And if a casino paid triple on both, they would have no edge whatsoever. I ran three scenarios of 100,000 sessions each. Each session played for exactly 100 rolls, betting $10 on each roll. That's a total bankroll of $1,000 per session. In scenario one, the table pays two to one on both the two and the 12. In scenario two, they pay three to one on the 12 and they're keeping the two at two to one. And scenario three is this mythical table that pays three to one on both the two and the 12. Let's see what happens. Here are the casino's results for the first scenario. The total bet is 100 million. That's $10 on each of 100 rolls for 100,000 sessions. The players won just shy of $50 million and lost over $55 million. The difference between those is 5.5 million, which ends up being a house take of 5.564%. That's exactly in line with the theoretical average, which is 5.56%. Twenty-eight point seven percent of the hundred thousand simulated players won money, while sixty-eight percent lost money, and just over three percent broke even. Here's a histogram of the amount won or lost. 
The full range of outcomes was between a loss of $520 and a win of $480. 75% of the sessions either lost money or won less than $20. Okay, now let's move on to a table that's a little more favorable to the player. This scenario still pays double on the 2, but pays triple on the 12. Again, we have $100 million bet. This time we have 52, almost $53 million won, and $55.5 million lost. That's a house take of $2.7 million, and an overall house edge that drops down to 2.731%. That is just slightly under the theoretical house edge, which is 2.78%. This time our proportion of winners has increased to 38.6%, and the proportion of losers is down to 58%, and still just about 3%, just over 3% of the sessions broke even. And here's the histogram of the amounts won and lost there's a noticeable shift to the right towards more positive numbers and more winning outcomes. I'll talk about that in just a bit. While the third scenario, which pays 3 to 1 on both the 2 and the 12, doesn't actually favor the player, it also isn't weighted against the player. It's a fair bet that pays true to the probability of the dice. We still have the $100 million bet, but this time the total one is $55,568,000, while the total lost is $55,527,000. So the house actually lost over $40,000 in this scenario. That's a negative house edge. It's actually a player's edge of 0.041%. This run saw 46.4% of the sessions win money, and half a percent more losers, just 46.9%. The number of pushes increased somewhat dramatically to 6.7%, and that really doesn't surprise me, given that this distribution is centered right around zero. Now before I show you the distribution, I'd like you to think about what you might expect to see. Here are the two scenarios we've seen so far. Do you think the range of outcomes will be wider, smaller, about the same? Do you expect more wins, more losses? Take a moment to think about it and put your guess in the comments below. Okay, let's take a look. The distribution is definitely centered around zero this time. The median is zero, so exactly half the outcomes are wins and half are losses. The bar between zero and $50 won is higher than the others, and that's mainly due to all the pushes where the player neither won nor lost money. Now let's compare the three scenarios. First, looking at the median, we're going from a loss of $60 to a loss of $30 and then a loss of zero. Now remember the median is the halfway point, so half the simulated players did better than this and half did worse. The averages follow the same trend, and they're very closely aligned with the house edge, but with a little bit of the expected variation that you can certainly see on the scenario 3 where 40 cents, the average is actually 41 cents 1. 
The middle 50% of outcomes, this is between the 25th and 75th percentiles, again show a trend towards more favorable outcomes for the player in general. The losses are definitely worse on uh, scenario one, that's $130 and then $100 and then $80. And then if you look at the 75th percentile, you're looking at $20, $50 and $80 one. If we go into the 5th and 95th percentiles, this is going to represent the middle 90% of players. We're going from a range of $230 loss to $120 won on the first scenario. And then in scenario 3, again, it really centers right around that zero point, and it's going to be plus or minus $200, which is about a $400 range. Now let's look at the most won and the most lost. So these numbers are the ones that are most sensitive to any particular simulation. By definition, they are outliers. So if you look at just the most lost, the highest number, 520, that's scenario one, that's the least favorable to the player. Then we go to 490 and 460, that really makes sense. But if you look at the most won, you have $480 in scenario one that drops to 470, and then it goes back to $480. It doesn't necessarily follow the house edge. I hope you all found this interesting. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And thank you for supporting the channel, making sure that you subscribe and click like and leave me a comment. All of those things really help with the algorithm. If you're interested in joining Patreon, I'd love to continue the conversation over there. And as always, good luck at the tables.